So I recently saw a video by uh, Lane Packwood, otherwise known as Bushcraft Sisyphus, talking about how uh, different handle lengths have different power and that sort of thing. And there's a few points I wanted to address on that, uh, you know, just a few odd things, but uh, it was a very good video anyway. One of the main points to discuss was a calculated uh, how much power a longer handle would theoretically have, which was like 24% uh, or something. Can't rightly remember. But that's going on the assumption that, uh, you know, an object spinning at a consistent speed, the longer it is, you know, the more power it has, the longer the arc is going to deliver more energy. You know, it's, it's a, a theoretical model, but uh, the reality is very different. You don't swing an axe going like this. You have to accelerate and then decelerate the axe when it hits the target. So it's about the acceleration, not necessarily if you had a consistent speed, say 50 miles an hour. Certainly from my experimentation and uh, um, experience, the longer handled axe it's much more difficult to accelerate than the short handled one and that's simply because leverage when I have a weight out here I have less pulling power than the weight in here so to give a long story short in theory yes you would get 25% or whatever power out of a, a longer handled axe but the reality is it's more complex in real life than just a, you know, a spinning axis. Really the thing that makes the most difference is the head weight. You get far more head speed out of a light axe than you will out of a heavy one. So you really want to be using an axe that you can easily swing. It's also worth noting that sometimes the longer handled axes feel uh, heavier than the axe you are. So if you look at the head weight of this axe, it's two and a half pounds. I've got another double bit that's three and a half pounds. And that double bit feels more like a four and a half pound axe on a shorter handle to swing. Now in bucking with an axe, you think the longer handle might have more power, but it doesn't and I'll demonstrate why. Now if you watch my swing, I'm standing completely upright. Now, because I'm standing upright, it's only my arms that are doing the work. Now, this is a, only a two and a half pound head in this axe, so I can swing that just using my arms. But when you move up to like a three and a half, four pounds, four and a half, five pounds, on this length of the handle, it becomes really difficult to swing it just with your arms. Now, I'll demonstrate with the short handle. Now, I've not swung an axe in a couple of weeks, so my technique is off. But you get the idea. With a short handle, if I just stand up straight and swing it, I'm going to hit myself in the shin. Therefore, when I'm cutting, you know, making a bucking cut, to hit the target, I have to bend my back, bend my knees, float forwards, and then straighten my legs again and that pulls it through. So if you need power, you can get far more from a shorter handled axe 
because you can use your whole body to add power to that axe. Now, you don't need power all the time. Um, and when you do, it's nice to have, particularly on tough wood like this. You really need to drive that axe in to remove the chips. The longer axe becomes useful again if you're cutting uh, trunks that are over a foot. When you get to that size, you really need to stand on top of them. And when you're standing on top of a log and cutting something big, then the 36 inch handle gives you a lot of advantage because suddenly you can drive it in with your body because you're reaching down so low and uh, you really need that reach otherwise you end up bending your back down like this which isn't comfortable the other thing about the short handled axe is the recovery is much easier I find because I'm bending down to make the cut lifting the axe back up is much easier because I'm using my whole body again whereas lifting a heavy axe with just your arms it can, can become very tiring Again, this is a lot of personal preference, so um, some guys like long handle axes for bucking. Personally, I can't stand them, but uh, you know, as a question of power, I'm very doubtful that uh, um, you know the longer handle gives any advantage as far as, as power. You can see there, the longer handled axe, when it comes to limbing, I'm actually choking up a lot to use it like a short handled axe. But the extra length is getting in my way, and I'm trying to transition it, hitting my body, it's catching in my leg, it's catching on things around me, which could be dangerous if it deflects the axe off into part of my body. But overall, it's just very awkward. Can you do it? Of course, you can but it's not really a great tool for the job. Short axe, it's much more manoeuvrable, much quicker, less likely to snag on your clothing or on things around you and deflect into your body. And when you're working in tight, like uh, confined space, which you often find yourself limbing, it's just less likely to catch on things, you know? Like if I'm swinging, and you should really check around you before you make a swing, but sometimes it doesn't happen like that. You know, I can swing in catch my axe on something out here. The shorter the axe, the less chance that's going to happen. Okay, now onto the felling cap. Now this is what really the long-handled axes are designed for and it's their niche. The problems with uh, bucking the long-handled axe are suddenly gone because I have plenty of room to swing and not, I can use my body weight because you know, there's no limit to how long I can make this handle. I can make it two meters long. And uh, because I'm making horizontal cuts like this and down cuts like this, it's not going to hit the ground. With the bucking, the problem was if I started driving it with my body, now I'm in the ground. So the question whether you can get more power of a long handle 
does apply to felling, provided you can swing it, of course. A long handled axe, it can be more tiring and difficult to control. Think of a leaf ridge. With this axe, I hold out as far as I can. It's pulling down on my wrist. And the leverage means that while I can hold this one, you know, it's much more difficult to hold this one. And it wants to twist down, so it can be more tiring to swing it, especially when you get up to the heavier weights, like the four pounders. And accuracy is a problem too. If I'm one degree off with this long handle, it magnifies the problem. Whereas, you know, something that might be a complete miss with this at um, may only be a minor miss for this. So learning to swing one of these accurately is much easier. There are some advantages, however. When I'm felling with a short handled axe, I've got to take extreme care not to bounce off into my leg. Of course, if you want to use good technique and make sure you cut them low and near the ground. With a longer handled axe, you still have to worry about glances but it's much more likely to hit the ground first, so it's much safer. The other advantage comes down to felling technique. If I'm cutting the short handled axe down low, you can see how my axe is in an angle. So when I come in to make the clearing cut, I've got to make sure the axe is absolutely flat, which can be very difficult. You should be able to see how Max is angled there. The longer handle, it becomes much easier to hit as close to horizontal as possible. Now, you may be asking why this is important. And that's because when you're felling a tree, if you make the face cut at this sort of angle, and then you make the back cut at this sort of angle, so a right-handed axeman would do this. So I'm going round. Hitting angle this side, and then I rotate the back cut, and then making an angle cut here. When you do that, um, the two notches will be at different angles, so the tree can actually twist as it falls, fall off the stump and back into your face. So it's just one of these safety things you want to do right, and. Uh, you know, you want a strong hinge when felling, and if you don't make sure those are horizontal perfectly, then you're kind of risking it. So in short, I can generate far more power with this long handle axe of felling. It's uh, more effective, more comfortable to swing, I think, um, and safer. However, I wouldn't always choose it. Consider. I mean, this is very, very overgrown forest. It's not been thinned out at all. So, you know, if I'm working in a lot of confined space, I'm more likely to catch this long handled axe on other trees and um, debris. Whereas I can actually manage to swing the small axe in this confined space to make this back cut. So, again, the small axe can be much handier. It's also worth noting, what I'm generally doing is the core wood challenge. So, felling is maybe 5 to 10 percent of the work I do. Another 5 percent to 10 percent limbing, and then the rest is bucking. So, a small advantage in the felling cut um, doesn't really make a difference, but an axe that bucks well for me does. And there's nothing wrong with these axes, the shorter ones. Very useful trees, up to a foot in diameter. Really, the longer handled axes only came out when you're cutting really big trees. It's also worth noting that most uh, lumberjacks were just felling the tree, maybe some limbing, and then leaving it to be uh, bucked up with saws. So the axe wasn't really their primary tool. The bucking at least. In conclusion I'd say certainly my preference is an axe, you know, the length of an arm, so it should tuck into your armpit. 
I rarely use 36 inch and uh, if I need more power I don't really look at bringing a longer handle with me, I look at bringing a heavier head you know, because the heavier head is still much more manoeuvrable for limbing it's much better for bucking, I can get a lot more power out of it and uh, you know the difference with fellings is really negligible and I like the, the extra accuracy of the shorter handle anyway Lane's got a really good channel you should definitely check out if you haven't already I know probably a lot of you came from him to me when you, he gave me a shout out in the past and it's really good to see someone else experimenting with axes and putting theories to the test and um, using old tools versus new ones and this sort of thing uh, I find this stuff far far more interesting you know using stuff practically and seeing whether the old timers are right than uh, just looking at old pictures of uh, different stamps and different makes of old axe that stuff while I do find slightly interesting is definitely not what I enjoy this hobby for now Lane's just uh, started a company producing axes with uh, uh, a couple of our people and it's really great to see as well that uh, someone not just complaining about how crap axes are out of the factory and actually stepping up to the plate and trying to make a product that solves all those issues so anyway there's a lot to check out with uh, Lane's channel and stuff he's up to so I'll put the link in the description below